I'm going to call the uh, Redevelopment Authority meeting for uh, November 13, 2018 to order at 6.01. First on the uh, agenda is Forest Street Project. Um, we have this on there because we have some things going on with that, trying to get a market value on it, number one. Number two, to get that through the central registry we have to get done. And number three, I know that I spoke with Bob. Bob has an idea and it's well worth talking. So if we can hold off on the first two items, so that way Bob, I want you to bring up what you told me and what your thoughts were on this property in conjunction with the URP. I think it's a great idea and it has some value to it. So I want to see what you guys' opinion is and what his thoughts are. You got it. Okay. So um, all the the draft um, the draft thing that they sent out that I was looking over, I was looking at some of the maps on how the maps were configured and how the layout with the roadways will be going and everything. And it got me to thinking, okay, so then I researched who owned what properties where and everything. And then come to find out, I found out that there's two properties that are owned by the same person. So I called them up and I asked them, hey, what's up with these properties or anything? And uh, he had said he's in talks with the developer. I said, okay, fine. I said, I don't want to know anything about it. I don't care. All right. I just want to know what's up with the properties. So then I researched the properties, and um, I had a thought because he did bring up that um, an offer that he had offered if he would um, take a transfer of property in lieu of the actual selling of the property somewhere else. I guess this guy's into this webby guy's into land and property or whatnot, which got me to think about our forestry property that we have there. I got it. Mm -hmm. Getting there. Get then maybe we could assist in this process to say, hmm, we have this property. Maybe we can do a swap and it would actually bypass any other issues of saying if the talks get broken down between the two, um, then it goes into eminent domain issues. And I hate that. I don't want to do that. I'm totally against it. But if we could maybe work out an agreement to purchase the property, um, or to swap the property with land values and then go ahead and um, us own the property. It makes it a lot easier for this process project going on to create an access road to uh, Main Street through that property because we own it and then the developer can just pay us the money that we put into it and we get our money. The process gets a lot clicker and smoother, I think. Uh, and that's only if it's allowed. I don't want to step on our toes or anything, but um, I did bring this up to Will first. Um, said this is just a thought process for it, and where do we want to go from here? So the, the if this is, hmm? where are the properties? Oh, Webby. The, when you come into the, um, there you go. when you come in, come into the, to the. Yeah, the Webby property was owned by the town through tax title, and it has passed this year. Probation, so it's, but the it's those two, yeah, that I kind of marked off and with a pencil. Given back to the owner at that point, so it was owned by the town. So the, there's property. two pieces of property because I know way back when I looked, the front one is good. The one cl closest to the back side of the old Shaw Plaza, mm -hmm. that's um, it's got a lot of um, wetlands. wetlands. Wetlands, right, yeah. right. So that's why I showed this picture here, um, that it shows the wetlands that are there. It shows. Um, the roadways, uh, and if you took where their road that they have um, coming down, not the Park Ave one, but the back one, that goes almost directly across. Cole's property? Where's that one? Mm -hmm. Is the, you're talking about this one here? Cole? Yeah, that roadway, yeah. The old, comes off the old yeah, Cole property. Right, right. There, right. Yeah. So, um, but looking at the way they did it in that draft, um, DIER. Yeah, one. Was, we're about here, or was it on the other side of the? Well, they had a couple of different okay. proposals, yeah, I but I just looked at. It, I just don't remember. Yeah. Exactly. They had they had one going from Park Ave, going straight across, getting oh, yes, that, getting getting rid of part of that building and going straight down. Right, and then they across had that, that way, kind of cutting into the wetlands there a little bit. Right, but the one that was down here was that closer to Aubuchon? Yeah, it, was it's it closer cutting to through twenty four one point zero instead of twenty four two? 
It would. I think it would be one? both. I think it will be both. It will kind of curve down that way. Okay. Um, but I looking at the. I did the assessor record cards. Yeah. And um, I, I question uh, one of them. The property uh, twenty four two dash zero. That one's assessed at eighty eight thousand four hundred. Uh, uh, seven hundred. Sorry, my f seven looks like a four. 700, but the bottom one, 2410, is assessed 329.2, which I don't know why. And Are you serious? I went to the assessor's office to find out why, and I was basically told if I wanted information, I need to put it in writing. I can't get information from them. Um, but it says it has antennas on it, and um, there's, no antennas. there's no antennas. There's nothing there. I suspect, because I went to the building inspector's office today, I suspect that uh, somewhere in the assessor's office they screwed up, and they put um, these antennas on this property record card when it should have been on the Route 44 sand and gravel one. Um, that would be my guess. And so this guy's been paying excessive taxes and it makes the property look more valuable than it really is. Oh my god. What's the square footage of each one? Yeah, the acreage. Um, yeah, what is it? Do you have that for uh, you? Is that the 329,000 one? one? One zero is 44 or well, 45,000. So that's one acre. Yeah. And the other one is um, uh, 60,000, 63,000 Acre and a half. Yeah. Bigger. Yeah. And yeah. it's worth less. And it has right. So that that's my that was my suggestion. What is um, their zoning? Are they both? It's all commercial. All commercial. Both. Yes. Yeah. Highway commercial. Yeah, highway commercial. So, I mean, that was my thought process. Um, I just so, put it out, out so, there. So this is the the, the old Shaw's concept yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Yes. So would this be assessed higher because it has frontage on 58, would, or, as opposed to the other one which only has frontage on Montello? Well, it doesn't have hardly any wetlands. That's number one compared to the other one which has a lot of wetlands. Right, but you're on a main road here. This is kind yeah. of a dead end. You know, right, you yeah, it, yeah. You wouldn't really develop anything from a retail yeah. standpoint there. Right. But anyway. So th that, was, that was my process of how I came to where I came and to bring it to you guys to see if we even wanted to maintain it or not, if it if we're allowed to do this or not. I don't want to interfere with the developer's rights to go forward with anything. Um, if he is going to go forward with something, but um, Mr. Webby also had made mention that somebody else has tried to um, tried to buy the property, and he thinks that that was just a someone looking at that saying, "Oh wait, so." Um, Someone else had he, tried to buy which property? He wanted to buy both, I guess. Oh, both oh, properties oh, and, okay. and maybe try to spike the price up higher from I the see. developer. And I see we assess those kinds of yeah. yeah. Thanks. So, and uh, what is the acreage on Forest Street? Do we remember? Do we remember? No, off the top, no, of, the top of my head. No. Okay. I know that either. All right. But It'll probably be in that paperwork. That yeah, I have it. It's like, uh, didn't put. But even if the other property was assessed at half that amount. Okay, right. it's still close to what we wanted for the forestry projects price. Right. Yeah, because well, we yeah we so, put the original on two twenty for the other one. Yeah. So, like I said I think I put it out there for people to take a thought process. See, like I said, I don't know if we're allowed to do that. If we're not allowed to do that, I'm not sure. But is the what do you call a transfer in rights or something? What do you call that? Transfer process? Rights. What is it? The TDR transfer of development yeah, rights. Yeah, we have that? That's not so much even really about the transfer of the property yeah. ownership as much yeah. as the underlying zoning to the oh, right. part of okay. the okay. okay. might not otherwise be allowed. We, we have any transfer rights at all? Typically what he's talking about? Kind of new? Theoretically it's possible. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I, don't, I don't think that would work in this instance because most of, most of the time, if you have a TDR that's going on, you have a development plan that's happening, and they want to transfer some of those rights somewhere else so they, they can get better right. development yeah, in right. a certain area. Right, right, right. And save it somewhere else right. or try to save property somewhere else. And okay. They, they would have to own both pieces of property. Okay, okay. Um, okay. So that's 
that's really where that lies. It, it, you're thinking about just swapping Swap, them? Yeah. Um, I, I originally thought that um, talking with Bob is a great talking discussion. Only things that really, after thinking about this, that bother me is, is what's the developer doing now? Because it's his game. And if the developer's in negotiations with the Webby property, um, that's between them. It's his, part of his project and trying to uh, maximize out the benefit of his project right. and get it, gain access in a better way for traffic flow and stuff. And that's probably all part of their traffic study. Oh, yeah, um, that's right. Which I'm going to have them all come in and talk to us anyways, probably in December, January, somewhere around that neck of the woods. Okay. Um, I think it's a good good idea. What What's the benefit? These are questions I ask. What's the benefit do we have by losing a the forestry property that has possibility of commercial development that will develop anyways? Um, going to the Webby's. The Webby's going to develop there and then we'll have that just as an access way going into a large scale commercial development, industrial development. What is, what is your thinking for having us involved with, with um, sort of the ownership of that as opposed to just introducing the two parties together and throwing this into the mix? Why wouldn't we look at, the, at the Route 44 as a potential buyer of Forest Street and then he and Webby can figure out what they, if they want to trade deeds? Well, if you want to do that, you can do that. Okay, I just I, I think that kind of really, simplifies it a little bit. It, it does. It does too. Like I said, I just I threw it out there saying this is an option that we may be able to avail to ourselves too, because it would be a lot easier for us to turn around and say, hey, we own the property now. If we want to bring water through there, well, we own it. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. If we want to turn around and they want to put a road through it, fine. Put a road through it. Okay, it makes it a lot easier. And if they want to buy it from us, they can buy it from us. Okay, as long as we make the money that we originally put forth that we would on Forest Street. Right. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, so there is no negative because if this should happen in Forest Street, we do go through this swap of properties. Okay, he's going to probably develop Forest Street. And it's going to be on the tax rolls anyways mm -hmm. here. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay, so you have that. We own this property here, and now we can turn around and actually move the process quicker and faster, and and who knows? I mean, I do have the the same concerns about where the developer is on this process of getting this whole thing done, uh, when it's going to get done and everything, but if, if we can move the process quicker, and but we also take the risk. We take a risk of, well, what if he doesn't fall through with this, and we have this property now, and do we now sell it on the other end? We own it, so we could sell it to someone else, put it up for sale for another business. So, Mr. Chairman, if I yep. could, and, and Bob, I appreciate the out-of-the-box thinking. I think, um, as Bob also mentioned, if allowed, and I think that that's where we've got to go. You know, let's, let's also recognize we're dealing with a little bit of apples and oranges. The, pro the forestry property is not owned by the Redevelopment Authority, and you don't have authority to transfer that property. The only thing you have authority to do is market that on behalf of the town to sell that. So that's that's what right. your, your your power, your authorities are for that. It's not part of an urban renewal plan. It can't be flopped from that standpoint. I think the other piece is when you're looking at the Webby properties, um, as I said, those were taken by tax title from Webby for not paying their taxes. And it did clear the year hurdle, um, which they have a year to pay back their taxes, and the town owned it. And then what they did is they went back and petitioned the courts to allow them to go back and buy it after the year receivership. So at some point it was given back to the Webbies because the court ordered it after the one year piece that was there. But there's a problem with those properties um, from the standpoint is that when you look at the zoning and you take the parcel size and you use your setbacks for wetlands and use your setback for frontage, your side and rear frontage, is that you'll quickly see that there's not much developable on those properties. And so there's, there's not a lot of potential for development on those that's there. So they really don't have a good high and best use uh, for that. And I think that that's part of the issue that's there as to what is the ultimate value of that from a fair appraisal that needs to be done. You know, 
the, the redevelopment authority doesn't have the ability of transferring the forestry project to this. It's just not something that you can do. Um, and then I think as Savory says, you know, why would you also want to take the risk of doing that if the developer finds another way of running its transportation out that doesn't need that parcel? And then we're stuck with a parcel that's not going to be, that we can't sell because of the frontage, the setbacks, the wetlands. You know, does it, can it perk? I mean, let's look at it from that stand. Can it perk? Yes, we can provide water to it, but can it perk to actually put in, in, a, in a septic system given all the peat and all the wetlands issues that are down there? So there's a lot of concerns with those two parcels, which is why over the years they've never sold, even though they have frontage to Route 58. We can always change the MOU with the Board of Selectmen. True. That can it's always be done. No, it's a town meeting issue. Yeah, the town meeting is given meeting. For, for development that needs to sell. It's not just as easy as, as flipping that around. And then, what legal authority do you have to transfer that property into an urban renewal plan that's not part of an urban renewal plan? These are all legal questions that have to be answered. Well, actually, that's included in the urban renewal plan, that whole area. No, the forest street is not included. No, in the forest the street isn't, but this actually process is. to put is. forest street in there to use that as an asset to it is the question that I just raised. We have the right to go ahead and, and sell that property, too, to anyone we want. What property? The forest street. You have the right to put, you don't, not to anyone you want, you have to put it out in the highest bid right. that gets it. Well, that's what I'm saying, is that we yeah. have that... That right That's to do that. MOU, yeah. yeah. So. And, you know, from the developer standpoint, I think as Savory was saying, I mean, they need to provide access to their to their property. Mm -hmm. They need to assemble other parcels. That's their job to do. We don't have the resources to do that, and that was made clear to the developer in the very beginning that it's up to the developer to assemble the property, put all the money into it, solve all the infrastructure <clears> issues. <throat> But if he, the town is not in a financial position to do that. But if, but if he goes through and he's tried and he can't get that property, or f figure out another option for it, then, he then he's going to the redevelopment. He's going to come to us and then we go through eminent domain and that's going to cost us even more money. Well, not necessarily. Not necessarily going to cost you more money. Again, what's the value of the property? What's the setbacks? What what can be built there? under existing zoning. That's the value of the property. And I know you don't like eminent domain, but if he's unsuccessful, then that's where he brings it back to the redevelopment authority and says, I need to purchase this 125 foot swath through this property in order to do X. And without that, I can't do the project. Or he moves that to an area where he can do it. But that's the developer's responsibility because he can't develop until he solves the transportation issues. I mean, to be clear, he can develop a certain portion of the property, but he can't develop it to the two million square feet without providing better transportation access. I'm sure we don't know this. Uh, I mean, Webby told you he was willing to uh, tr um, trade property. He, he property. said he, he had offered that. To? To the developer. Oh, to Route 44? To trade the oh. forestry property? Well, no, just no, to, to no. that they- Just in, in theory. In theory. Yeah. So, and that but. may be something that developers do because a lot, like you get this with housing developers, is that they'll come in and they'll, in order, instead of paying for land, they'll say, okay, I give you three lots once I put the infrastructure on, if you give me your parcel. Again, all within the developer's control. Right now, is there any way that, without stepping on toes, we can alert the developer that there is this Forest Street property available? He, he may what, not know. What's the advantage for the developer to go after the forestry property? What he would give him is some land in the industrial park to develop a oh. small building on. Okay. He'd give him something he already owns. He wouldn't go out and try to buy him another piece of property. Because if that's the case, why not just pay him the value of that? Well, do we... Uh, do we have any idea? Is Webby just holding on to the property? For I don't know. I don't know that. Like I said, I was very limited of what I would wanted him to tell me, and I stopped him a couple of times. Like, right. hey, listen, I don't know. Don't need to know that. So the DIR is there, and it's public record. Go take a look at it. So.
I think about two years ago in the smaller parcel, the one closer to uh, Aubuchon, uh, they did go into the middle of that and I think they did perk tests. When the town owned it, we did go in there. Okay. All right. How recent did the town own it? 18 months ago? How many? 18 months ago? Yeah, oh, well, that's, okay. that makes sense. Because I remember when we were first starting with this URP, I drove, took that road here, the Coles Road, I call it mm -hmm. the Coles Road, and I saw that they had gone and I opened up, that, uh, like he's talking about. It's an encyclopedia. Yeah. Yeah, he's probably yes, sure remember Jack Hunter being very excited that he finally cleared the one year mark. Yeah. yeah. And then he was, it was very odd how he was coming back. We've never seen anything like that before. So, I know time wise. Yeah, I just so. don't mind me. You guys can carry no. on without me. I, I That's just, it. I just put it out there and see where, if people were interested in. Doing something with it or not? So do we have a next out. step? Do we, the committee well, feel that we have a next step? I think the next step is the developer. We don't know Sorry what the developer is doing. So that would be the town plan of talking to the developer? It's the developer. Whatever negotiations the developer is doing with the property. So the who's properties. going to be the spokesperson? You really don't want to interject we, yourself into yeah, these I, negotiations. That's why yeah. it's odd for a member of the board to call without going through the chairman one of these properties that are under potential acquisition. It's just, just odd. Because you got to be careful where you are with those. Because all of a sudden now, if it comes back to do some eminent domain taking, you know, Bob's actions may have caused some conflict with the board, or with him personally. Don't think of that. All right, let's move on. Oh, the concept is good. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's what it is. worth a discussion. Yeah. Um, next, next uh, we have those two other items. Um, Stephen, were you able to get a value of the uh, Far Street property from the assessors? No, um, Mr. Chair. Actually, um, I was hoping that we can clarify which exactly property this is. I, I reached out to the assessor. The number 94 Forest Street was provided to me at the last meeting. I was hoping that we could clarify that before this meeting, but there's no 94 in the assessor's database. It's it's Main Street. It's it's under Main Street. Yeah, I don't know what we had it advertised at before. Mm -hmm. It's all that paperwork. You no, know, it was it was ninety four. It was ninety four yeah. Forest Street, but the way the assessor record cards have it, it has something to do with Main Street, if so I remember correctly. On Main Street, Bob. Yeah. Um, Can you identify roughly on this arrow? Did I capture it quickly? So here's Main Street. This is for our forest. Area. So. Stephen. So unless it's further down where it connects No, to it's actually, it's further down this way here. Yeah. Well, there's going to be a title for it. That's the, the potential that's, right there. That's the potential sink right here. Oh, yeah. Just like, oh, so so it would go through the dry area the town totally of yes, the small Absolutely, parcel. yeah. Yeah. My phone. But they're going to have to no make signal. that swing with those trucks like that? You sure? I thought well, there might be like some kind of a roll. You know, they have these. Yeah, I think they look like All right, so we have to yeah. clarify that. I'm going to keep moving, like kids. Go ahead. I'll look. Um, also, that would roll into getting on the um, central register because if we don't have the right map parcel street name address then you can't really put it on there you mean it hasn't been the assessors hasn't cha made the change at the last meeting because it was zero forest when we started like three years ago <coughs> excuse me at the but, last rda meeting i was advised that it was known as number 94 forest okay so yeah it was changed no as 94 forest. when i'm looking at this map here forest street doesn't connect to main street it's interrupted by fuller street to the north yeah. And it's interrupted by Purchase Street to the south. Yeah, so it's frankly, really all the information I've been given to try and find this has, has led me to a dead end. You must have a title and deed at the we registry. Can, we can reach out to Kathleen O'Donnell. Because at the time mm -hmm. that there was a PNS on it with... Um, My phone doesn't work Rick yet. Ellis. Mm-hmm. There had to be some documents there that was going back and forth. You don't have anything in the file 
from the old PNS or? It was Rick the, Ellis. Like the old listing. I wasn't involved with that. But I mean the old listing, we don't have anything here. With the the old listing with Century 21? Rick Ellis would be the person. Rick Ellis found the discrepancy mm -hmm. that the engineer did. On the acreage. On, right. And the assessors, who was the, who was the one that didn't have it right? The assessor? The or assessors. The assessors didn't have it correct. But the deed. But the deed. The deed was okay. Should be part of the documents that you that Savory has for... Um, yeah, I'll look at those. Yeah. From uh, Brenda. Yep. Yeah, right, exactly. So What's your street name? I'm not sure I know Rick. What's, what's, what's that street name? Greg Ellis was a Malina? person no. who was interested uh, in buying the property. Okay. And Lillian. Lillian, that's what it is. he got involved. Um, how did he find out... Uh, All right, yeah. Savory, how did he find out that there was a discrepancy? What was he I was, doing? I don't know. You weren't on the board no, at that time. All right, yeah. all right, so anyways, so that, anyway. that all needs so, to be clarified. This is Quickies here. Yeah. Yeah. Forest Street runs here. What's the name mm -hmm. of Rick Ellis' business? All the way across business? like that. Yeah, There's another Ellis road here. Covers. This is um, the insulation pool place. Ellis, Ellis Pool Covers. Pool covers. Ellis Pool um, Covers, yeah. McMahon. He's down by the airport. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Spivak's office is right here. And then this, this is the is, big um, four, four shamrocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What's the yeah. guy's first name again? And then um, there's a vacant Rick? lot, and then Rick's. there's Lillian Way off of Main Street. So Forest Street starts right here. So Lillian Way, 58 quickies. So, sorry. That's right. All right. So this guy's lot's here. This is the lot right here. Right beside this building. So it's between Colonial and Four Shamrocks. Well, this is a glass company. Okay. This is Quickies. It's directly across from Quickies. Gotcha. But on the on the record card, it says something about Main Street on it. Why I don't know. Okay. You know what Professor Mappet is? I yes, it's fifty. 50. I, I might it right now. <laughs> What's fifty? Oh, because I'm pulling them up too. The assessor's map. <laughs> Which property is it? Um, it's six dash one, one point three eight acres. Okay. Stephen. Um, he right, owns. Six dash one. He owns okay. Ellis Pool Covers. Oh, okay. Six right. dash one. He okay. was a prospective buyer. Yes. His first name is Rick. All right. So we gotta get yeah. all that. I don't. Thank you, everyone, for your collective effort. <laughs> I'll have a report for the next meeting. Do you want to shoot your screenshot of the assessor? Actually, I just jotted it, but if it's 56 one that I can. So, moving on to the uh, URP update, uh, Chairman's update, URP update. I don't have anything, but I was hoping that, Michael, you might be able to give us some input on the URP status, where they're at. This is what comes up. Um, no record found. Well, there's no status on the map URP, 50, but for six the NEPA, one. Um, they're still in the process of preparing their file that with that environmental that's what impact report. Okay. And no Steven's been in touch with them, so Steven may have more yeah. information than that. For the final on. EIR, they're working on drafting no, that. They, actually, they haven't communicated the status um, for that, but I did talk to them only just recently uh, on the heels of our site you visit go to Main a couple weeks ago. And look for Tom Akawa. We received mm -hmm. some of the... And then on the left-hand side, look for it that way. Hold on, guys. Sorry. For the water pot and the the soil. Uh, but there's there's been no follow up as yet for the uh, the the, the uh, draft EIR. I'll, I'll reach out to them and have a response for you. Thank you, both. Alright, you wanna talk about you guys' second site visit on the out to the URP? Um, they're bringing in dirt. Yeah. They're leveling it off, but it's uh, they got a long way to go. Yeah, uh, to bring that up to uh, the grade that they're planning to. Um, and uh, and it's uh, they're bringing it in intermittently. They don't have a constant source, so they, when it's available, they bring it in as much as they can. But it's not constant. It's coming in every day. Um, but everything seemed to be 
okay. Mm. Uh, he pointed out where they were going to put the water tower and where they were going to probably put the uh, storage, the electrical um, you know, component of, of you know the distribution to the mm -hmm. rest of the buildings, and they were going to be fairly close together. Um, so it was. You know, I've been out there a few times before with conservation, so it's just more dirt. <laughs> Same place, more dirt. Yep. A lot of clay. A lot of clay was brought in. Yeah. Um, very thick. It has muddy, to be a certain muddy, mix, he said. It muddy. Was, it was muddy. Um, when we went out there, so. Yeah, I, know. I would have thought it would have been more long, to be honest. I thought be out there and see a lot more open area that they put in, but. It's a big acreage. It's a lot. It's a lot. I mean, when they first were talking about bringing in, uh, what was it, like 300 trucks a day or something like yeah. that, it was some amount. Yeah, yeah from and, early um, in the morning till Yeah, late, late it was going to keep going, so that's what we're thinking, but clearly it's not, that's not happening. No. No. So, no. I mean. I had been there once with, when a truck came in, and, you know, you're standing next to a truck, and it's huge, and it dumps its dirt, and you can hardly tell. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right, going on to moving on, guys. I'm just moving right along here. Members' comments, um, discussion on other projects. I left this on here just one last time in case you guys came up with anything that you wanted to work on, talk about. Anybody's done any research on other projects? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it says Joanna, five year plan. That's the next one. Oh, okay. Because that was separate. Oh, all right. I'm good. Hearing nothing? Yeah, I'm, I'm good, too. Okay, Joanna, five-year plan. Uh, I sent an email to the town administrator. I wanted to know how much money was in uh, the accounts as far as uh, CPC affordable housing reserve is $419,031. I also asked them about the housing trust fund. That has 89741 his suggestion was, and I concur, uh, once we know when the survey is going out and then focus on next steps and long-range plan with the new data, when is the survey going out, Ms. Savory? Uh, we are meeting with the um, potential survey company on a week from today. I'm hoping that, that they're able to confirm that. Yep, yep. Uh, and, and then it's just a matter of developing the survey. I think our plan was to put it out sometime in the end of January, January early February. February, so that we January, February time? Probably? Yeah, that's when okay. it would be uh, distributed. And that's the senior citizen survey? Yes. For 55 or older. Yeah. 55 or older, yeah. yes. All right. Not you, huh? So, I concur. With, um, with the town administrator, and uh, so once we know between that time frame, um, we'll probably would like to meet with the town administrator, obviously, see and Stephen as well to kind of talk about it. And just to add that too, the CPC is also waiting uh, until the survey is out before they look at uh, entertaining any housing programs. Uh, they did have a request from the housing authority for money to fix up some of the state housing, and uh, they had put that on hold just because they didn't feel, one, it's appropriate to use town money to fix state housing property. All oh, right, But right. second is that they really don't want to get into any discussions. They didn't know what the needs are of the town through the survey. So it's the same same situation. Okay, good. Oh, actually, yeah. I do have another thing. Do you have another thing? When you're, when you're done. I'm done. Oh, this is, I was doing some searches on um, grant opportunities throughout the federal government and whatnot. Um, and I did find this self-help home ownership opportunity program um, that they have $10 million of funds to help develop properties. Um, the one caveat, which I underlined here, is that um, it has to be done in at least two states. So we would have to partner up with another state or whatnot to do a housing project, but we could get money that way too. Uh, this one's only good until November 2018, but through talking to the guy, he says every year there's more that come up too for grants, for opportunities, for housing. So, and who is this through? Um, this is through um, uh, housing and urban development. Okay, so it's HUD. HUD. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
So just interesting. There are there are. States. Yeah, I thought that was bizarre, but yeah, yeah, but it's federal. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's federal. So that's probably why they have to do it. Yeah. So there are there is some other monies that we could possibly look at. Okay. Uh, let me just say one thing, um, Secretary. Mm -hmm. um, could you make sure? Well, we haven't gotten to the minutes yet, mm -hmm. but I noticed on the exhibit uh, I wanted the map to be included that I had handed out to the to the board, and I, had, I don't always know exactly what you want okay. to be included on that. So I would be happy to add that when it comes up. Okay. Well, when we get to the minutes, I'm. You all set with discussion? Yeah, fine, mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody okay? Yeah. yeah. All right, moving on to Treasurer's Report and Bills Payable. Joanna, Come Treasurer's on. Report. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Um, I, um, Treasurer's Report, I extended it from October to November simply because in November, Susan, um, she did what she, we asked her to do all the time, that is cash the check, which you did do. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, with that uh, balance, uh, taken into uh, November just by her simple cashing of that check. Uh, the uh, checking account has $679.19. The um, savings account is $25,166.97. And the car Carver Urban Renewal. The savings account has three thousand fourteen dollars and ninety four cents. If you, the <clears throat> savings account year to date paid interest is fifty seven dollars and six cents. In the Urban Renewal Savings Plan, uh, interest to date is eighty five cents. And that is it. I make a motion. We approve the treasurer's report. I'll second that. Motion made and second to approve the treasurer's report as presented. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Minutes of October 16, 2018. What's the pleasure of the board? Uh, I only have one spelling correction. Okay. She called me Mr. <laughs> I did. You did. Yeah, Perfect. Did. She didn't call you Mr. Savory, did she? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Page two. Okay. Page two. Under Miss Layton's five-year plan, that sounds good. Come down a ways, right in the oh, middle. Right in the it says middle. Mr. Layton. It should be Ms. Layton. I enjoy that. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, the inclusion of that map that I handed out uh, is on the exhibits. Uh, which I didn't see, but I wanted to be included because I talked about it. Now, does Jill have a copy of that? I don't know. Um, if she doesn't, she can have her email me, and I, I can walk it in. I'll walk it in. There was one thing, um, one more thing uh, on page three. I just need some clarification here. It said, uh, she talked, She's the, the uh, minutes say Mr. St. Clair, and he's saying we need a project in mind. Um, and, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Milanowski, we need to do a COA needs analysis. Until we know what the community needs, we should not be moving on a project. This is the statement I'm going to ask for clarification. If, put, if putting housing on the existing COA facility makes sense, then you have 400000 to move forward. Mike, could you clarify that? Yeah, let me just look at this. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. So first, the COA needs analysis should be the senior study, not the yeah, COA Yeah, that's analysis. fine. Until... We know what the community needs from the from the study, uh, the survey. Putting housing on this is, makes sense. Then you have four hundred thousand dollars to move forward. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, the how the CPC has four hundred some odd thousand dollars to put towards some type of a, an affordable housing project, whether it's there or someplace else. They have that money available. Yeah. So it says they're putting the housing on the existing facility. Adding so to the back of the 
Yeah. Marcus Atwood House. So if Adding you chose to, to do bathroom? that, yeah. then you could have 400000 for that, if that's what the CPC wanted to give the money for. Oh, that would be affordable, not necessarily senior. Correct, affordable. Um, but there's no room back there. No, there's no room. Anyway, I didn't want to get into the open discussion. I just want some clarification on that. So did you that say was. that it's not actually a needs analysis? It should be called something else? Uh, it should be... Uh, I, I think we. I think it is... Is it a survey? No, I think it is needs analysis, is it not? That's the name of the committee. The, it, it is needs. needs it's needs the needs Council on Aging okay. Needs Analysis. Assessment? Okay. Yeah. It needs Assessment Committee is, is the name of it. Right. The so it's assessment, not analysis. Assessment. Assessment. And then um, the next thing it says, Mr. Belbin, he yeah. makes a statement. And he, he noticed that the town administrator was included in the emails. And he says he didn't feel he should be on the on there. And then uh, Mr. St. Clair makes his comeback. He says, I include him as he keeps the Board of Selectmen informed. And Mr. Belvin goes, he's not a member and I don't feel he should be getting these. And then Mr. St. Clair says, I will continue to include him as he keeps the Board of Selectmen informed. I just want to say that I have no problem with the town administrator being on the email. However, I want to end, I want to ask the town administrator, Stephen Cole, you are our executive director here, so to speak. Do you appear at, at the Selectmen's meeting and do you report on various committees? Not typically and unless asked or invited. Okay, and the reason I'm making that... Stephen did, did report, did give an update on the Redevelopment Authority about two months ago right. when you were there for something else along with a bunch of other reports. Okay. Jack Hunter, when he sat on at the table, just as you are, he would be the person that would go uh, unless it was something that we needed the chairman or whomever to go. So I was just wondering if you would obviously take that role uh, to be briefing as needed, our committee and whatever it needs to be briefed on in front of the selectmen. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not asking for you to take you off. So for that, I mean, yes, if there's a redevelopment authority briefing that's going to be done yeah. on the agenda, so okay. we're coming to do that. If there's normal dialogue that's happening in our in our monthly meetings yeah. and somebody asks a question, I have knowledge, so I'm going to answer the question. Oh, definitely. But it's not a presentation. It's a right. response type of thing. Right, right. But Stephen is your executive director. Okay. I've stepped down from that. Okay. And um, so he is the person to do, to do that. So, However, I just have broad coordination of the entire town. Right. So as Mr. Sinclair says, right. it helps to keep everybody informed. Right. And so, uh, Mr. St. Clair, you're, you're not 100%. You're okay. I will continue to include him as he keeps the board of selectmen informed. So I'm okay? You're okay. <laughs> that's a debate. <laughs> so that, that, that's me. Um, and I want to thank uh, town administrator. I read at the very end he also has $7,800 set to go on town meeting. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. That concludes me. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as written with the uh, changes yeah. for Joanna. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Most made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, next meeting. Believe it or not, end of December. Well, Christmas is a Tuesday, I believe. Mm -hmm. So uh, would it be the 18th? Christmas? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Right. Tuesday the 18th? Yeah, Tuesday the 18th. Is that a motion, Mr. Savory? I, if everyone's good with it, y'all make a motion. Yeah, go ahead. I'll make a motion that our next meeting be held on Tuesday, December 18th at 6 o'clock p.m. Second. Motion made and second set on next meeting for December 18th at 6 p.m. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 I entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a 1845. second? 18.45. I'll second. Motion made and second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Everybody have a great, safe Thanksgiving. Thank you. You too. Thank Continue. you. You too.